We are live. Welcome to the first episode of uh, The State of Mirrorless. This is your host, Hugo Che, and joining me today are my co-host, Andre Apple, and our guest, uh, Matthew Gasquet of uh, Mirror Lessons. Hi. Um, hi, Matthew. Hi, Andre. How's it going? Well, it's good. Very good. Good. It's not too, not too warm outside, so it's okay. So joining us <laughs> Or from beautiful Turin, Italy. Yes, exactly. And it, it, it might rain a little bit, but for now the sun, so it's okay. Not too hot for now. So <clears throat> it's good weather in Turin. How are things with you, Andre? Great, and I'm really looking forward to the interview with Matthew. Matthew? Right. Matthew. So <laughs> this is going to be a very European uh, episode. We are three <laughs> in Europe. Uh, I'm currently based in Italy. And Andre, you're based in Germany, right? That's right. Right. And, uh, me and Matthew are just a few kilometers apart. Yeah. Less than 100 miles if you want to use the imperial system. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Matthew, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, and about your, your website, uh, what's that called, Mi Mirror Lessons? Mirror Lessons, yes. Uh, well, uh, well, it's, uh, so my story is I, I started um, seriously uh, with photography about five, six years ago. Uh, I first, uh, actually, my, my main job until uh, this last year was uh, mainly video. I did a lot of uh, video production, uh, video directing for corporates, videos and commercials, small commercials and stuff like that. I did a cinema school in France and uh, photography, actually, I started with photography when I was a kid, like eight, nine years old. Uh, my, my parents uh, gave me an old uh, SLR film camera for my birthday. Unfortunately, I, I broke it uh, like two, two months later. <laughs> And then I, 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 I got back with photography when I finished my cinema school because I, want, I was curious to, to try it again. And little by little it became a, a second job along my, along the, my, my video business. And I, I currently work for the National Cinema Museum in Turin, uh, so I, my main a job uh, consists of events photography. I also do different uh, incentive uh, business travel and business travels uh, like incentive travels for corporates. And so I always have to document events of different kinds. So this is, I would say, this is the main, uh, the main main photography uh, from a business side. And uh, then started Mio lessons. So Mio lessons. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I built the site with my partner Heather Roster. That unfortunately she's not here today. And uh, well, I we built it one one year and a half ago. Uh, it, it, it began January 2013, and the idea was uh, we had the idea for different reason. But uh, I started to 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 look into mirrorless cameras. Um, I was curious about it and uh, had had some blogging experience and uh, of course uh, they were we both uh, we, bo we both love photography so we say why we don't try to to build something and see how it goes and in one year it it uh, it, it, it really it it did really well and uh, uh, for visits and uh, other aspects so we we leader by leader we understood that it could become a very interesting uh, logistic platform for us and in the same time I start to use more and more those mirrorless cameras for my work uh, until I switch completely from from my DSLR and so naturally it became I would say my main business now I mean uh, uh, so it's uh, that's I, I went briefly <coughs> speaking. <laughs> so, so you would say you are more of a, a blogger now than a photographer? 
that your main line of business, or do you see it well, becoming more and more important? Well, I I I I am still active uh, on on photography as a, as a as a as a professional photographer uh, because I mean I have the contract with the Cinema Museum and uh, I often have other opportunities to work, but. Uh, I would say that the blog, yes, is becoming is becoming uh, an important part of uh, of the business, and uh, and so I, I'm actually uh, I'm stopping a little bit the video the video part to concentrate mainly on mirror lessons and my photography my photography job. So and uh, but I will still say that I'm a, I will say I'm a photographer and a blogger. <laughs> So, how often do you update the site? Is it well, daily or? we try to publish one article per day. Um, we are not consistent yet. Uh, and mostly the reason was that my other job was often, had often priority, of course. And, uh, but that the idea uh, it's to publish one article per day, or um, except the weekend, so five articles per week, and uh, and trying to vary in bef between reviews or uh, interviews or other interesting content. Uh, it's what, are, what are people more more interested in? I mean, uh, is that gear reviews or other topics? What 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 are the main topics that you? Well, the main topics are, are camera reviews, of course. That's the main reason why we people come to visit our website. Um, and w what we try to do also is to build our own reviews or the interesting content. For example, we we started this Mio Less on the Job series where we interview uh, professional photographers that use mirrorless cameras for their job, either in conjunction with their DSLR or either standalone. But um, we, we we try to 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 bring lots of point of view from a professional uh, perspective because that's interesting and not not a lot of websites are doing that um, and of course there's other interesting content we can add uh, st we started uh, to accept guest posts since two months now and. Uh, and there's a lot of ideas in mind, so we'll see how it goes. Aren't you, since you started with video, I wanted to ask, the, aren't you planning to, or are you doing actually at the moment um, video content for the site, or it's mostly text and images? We 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 did have, uh, different videos for the site as well. Um, I actually shot uh, one video last uh, week uh, that will, won't be online uh, soon, unfortunately. But uh, we 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 are trying to increment the the video the video work for the site. It's either some sometimes it's a video review or it's uh, a video shot with a particular camera to either show. What the camera can do, or it's just a pretext to do a video and use one of those cameras. And but uh, we again here for the videos where well, we we have, we have been inconsistent because um, mainly because it's you know, it takes time to write, photograph, uh, shooting video, and then putting all that online. But um, I certainly one of the, the idea I have in mind is certainly to bring my experience in video for the website as well, and uh, not only for gear review, but also for uh, interesting content or interesting story to tell. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, mm -hmm. so coming yeah, from yeah, yeah. So, so coming from videography, did you use DSLRs or still cameras with video capabilities on on that other job, or dedicated video cameras? Because I think. You kind of shoot mirrorless now. Yes. Well, I use a lot of different cameras actually uh, because I started before the DSLR became uh, a standard for video production. Um, but one of the, the camera we used the most uh, was the Panasonic A AF101, uh, which is uh, it has the same micro four-four sensor of the Lumix uh, series 
but it was a proper video camera with uh, audio connection and the filters and uh, in all the the features that a normal camcorder has. Uh, I I sometimes worked as well with uh, Canon DSLRs. Um, recently, I, I did different videos with uh, the Canon C C100 and C300, which are um, the, the the Canon cinema cinema cameras as well. So I have different experience with that. But for my personal work or for smaller job, I I, I, I used a lot of the GH3 from Panasonic as well. So and from now on, I'm 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 certainly will use only mirrorless cameras, uh, except some uh, except some other opportunity. But uh, I, I yes, I, I saw a lot of different cameras, both DSLRs or both steels that have video function or proper cameras, proper camcorders. So what what are, what is your preferred system nowadays? Well, if, uh, if you have the, the opportunity to choose the the best one, no budget limits. Uh, in the mirrorless. Yeah, segments, in, yes. in general. Uh, well, um, for steels, I what well, the, the the system I I I use mainly for my job is the Micro Four Thirds system, and I have a OMD M1 from Olympus, and uh, several lenses, both zoom and prime lenses. Uh, the reason uh, is mainly because the Micro Four system is, as of as of today, is the most complete system, both in terms of lenses and also accessories, and. Also using often the Panasonic cameras that have a micro four foot sensor for video, uh, it's easy to switch lenses between uh, for stills and for videos. And uh, I also have a couple of adapters for my old Nikon lenses. So it's uh, as a system, it's uh, it's it's more easy to use and it's more um, practical for both stills and videos. So that, that's the main, main system I'm using right now. And Andre, what are you using? I got a Sony A7. I switched from the Canon system that I used for nearly 15 years and made the move to the mirrorless world and I never regretted it. <laughs> but I'm, cur I'm currently testing the A7S. So I'm oh, using very this nice. right now. <laughs> No, I'm I'm a Fuji. I'm a Fuji user. So we have three different systems here, and it's uh, it's nice to to compare and <laughs> see ex impressions on the various systems. Right. Uh, I I wanted to to ask you both what what do you find so great about those systems? What makes you prefer them to um, uh, to DSLRs or uh, I don't know, medium format or anything else that you might want to to use, uh, Matthew. Well, the main the the thing I like the most about the microphone system is how compact it can be. Um, one of the main reason I I decided to switch from DSLR was the ability to use uh, a smaller and lightweight uh, system. Uh, and I mean, the micro four system can really be small. I mean, if you use the M1 with uh, with the 35, 100, 2.8 from Lumix, which is the equivalent of 70, 200 on a, on a DSLR, it's it's really really small. I mean, it's uh, and so that's the main reason. The micro four system is very compact. Um, the lenses are very good, and um, and. Uh, I mean, it has enough image quality from what I need, uh, so that's that's the main reason. Uh, I, I would add maybe also because I, I the M5, the M5 was the first mirrorless camera we I, I, I bought, and the first camera I reviewed as well for the website. So it was also the system where I invested more lenses and uh, also had some accessory like flash. So it, it was. Most, more logical for me to, to use that as my main system and then use other cameras for other, other reasons or other jobs. Andre, in your opinion? Yeah, for me it was of course also the size of the camera that's, that is amazing. I mean they packed the full frame 
sensor into such a small body and that was really tempting because the image quality of the a7 is really amazing um, it, it didn't uh, what I really like is if you are outside shooting you've got the live histogram in the viewfinder you can dial in exposure compensation you can set the viewfinder so that you live see how it will change and defect your image um, that can be really really cool and especially shooting in low light conditions it's a little bit like a uh, night vision it gets grainier your viewfinder but you still see perfectly what you are doing what you're framing and and where you're focusing at good so uh, if I were to, to ask you what what is in your in your bag or what is in your uh, typical configuration when you you go out on a shoot professionally or even uh, if you want to, to go out on a, on a trip and just take some photos, what, what camera, what body, what lenses would you put in your bag? Matthew? Well, uh, professionally in my bag, he has uh, an OMD M1, uh, different lenses. I have the 12 to 40, 2.8, uh, 35 to 100, 2.8, uh, the 75, 1.8. Uh, um, one Olympus flash, uh, and then also I often bring uh, uh, an Olympus CP5 as a second body because uh, sometimes it's uh, it's very useful to to have two bodies, and they are packed in a relative small bag, so it's uh, it's um, that's what I use professionally. For other interest, for uh, other photography opportunity, uh, I would say it also depends on which camera I'm currently reviewing. So right now in my bag, there's a Sony A7S and also sometimes the Panasonic GH4 as I'm the reviewing, uh, I'm still in, uh, finishing to review it. And then, um, so I mean, and then I, it, it's easy, it's hard for me to uh, keep a camera if I'm, if I, I won't use it uh, for my job because I mean I can keep all the cameras that I review and sometimes I have to send it back or sell it to get another one so I mean uh, last year one of, my, one of my favorite camera of all was the Fuji X100S but unfortunately I ended up uh, selling it to get something else so you know it's so I have two bags, one for my job and one for me or lessons. One for me or lessons is uh, constantly changing. <laughs> yeah, understood. Uh, this is a, instead a more of a question for Andre, because as if, if I understand correctly, you were not uh, shooting with DSLRs for, for a long period of time, right? Uh, and instead, Andre said just he used Canon for, for 15 years. So is there anything that you miss from that kind of system? Sometimes, but it's a minor issue. The battery life is shorter. You have to you have to just know it and accept it because the electronic viewfinder has to be powered. Um, I don't. That's not a real big issue. I got the battery grip for the A7. I love it. But with the Canon, I could like shoot on for weeks. Sometimes it's it's with the battery grip and and the good batteries in there. It was like. Let's check. Oh, still half full. Let's go on. And it, it didn't bother me. With the A7, I go the safe route and I, I recharge often to make sure that they are fully charged when I go out. And I've got some more spare batteries than with the Canon. Good. I, I was talking to somebody the other day who said he, he had been to India uh, with a mirrorless system. I think a Fuji, right? They all have this problem, quote-unquote, with uh, uh, short battery life. And he said, you can go to India and you can carry five batteries. Okay, so you can recharge them when they're out and so on. The problem is that in a place like that or in a third world country in general, you might have lots of blackouts. You might not have, even in major hotels, you might not have power. So you can have five batteries and you've used them all during the day, but you cannot recharge them all during the night. So the day after, you're, you're a bit short on battery life. So that, that's a, a thing to, con to consider maybe. And if you have many batteries, maybe you need many chargers too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, for, for traveling, okay, I will cover the name of it, but I've got this little device. I'm not making mm -hmm. advertisement here. 
basically it's a USB charger. You can plug in anything in, uh, it's got two USB ports, you can charge up this thing. It's basically a big battery built to charge devices. And the Sony can be charged via USB. On the road, I can just plug in the Sony into this thingy. It's got 10,000 milliampere hours or whatever you call it, and charge it up. Cool. And whenever I'm back in a hotel or somewhere, I can recharge this thingy to recharge the camera when on a trip. And I know that I won't have power on the road. So, so there are ways around that. You just have to adapt. I mean, and the next step would be uh, solar panels to, to yeah. charge them. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So, where, this is the magic crystal ball question, but where do you see that the market going? Where do you see the mirrorless world? taking over the DSLR world. You see more and more people switching until uh, DSLRs will be a, a bit of a curiosity of the past where like nowadays you see people with view cameras and you say, wow, that's uh, <laughs> one in a million. What, where, where is the world going in, in that respect? What do you think? Uh, I, so, uh, well, I that's that's an interesting question, and I don't think there is a, a straight answer to that yet. Uh, I think that the, the the market is changing a little bit, and I think there's some some confusion for now. And I think that many brands are trying uh, to release more new products to see how, how they go and what what's uh, if they, they they can can have some sort of influence to the market i mean sony is a very good example uh, in the last year sony released a lot of uh, in innovative and interesting cameras uh, from uh, from the the sony a7 a7r to uh, the the qx camera that you attach to the smartphone i mean they, they're trying different things to 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 see, to, I think they try to shake the market in that way, and that, that that's interesting. If the, uh, mirrorless will take over DSLR, that I don't know. I don't think yet, because uh, the I mean, still the majority of people are shooting DSLRs. Um, if you want to buy an entry-level DSLR, it's often cheaper or have the same price of uh, a good mirrorless camera. And for certain uh, certain application like photography, uh, sports photography, uh, of course, these are still more interesting as a system. It's not it's not the camera itself because it, there are mirrorless cameras that can that can have the same speed. For example, autofocus is getting there little by little. But for example, with DSLR, you have a, a vast choice of lenses that you don't have yet with uh, with most um, mirrorless system. Of course, with with some system you can adapt for the lenses, but from a professional point of view, it's not always uh, a good thing to do, in my opinion. And I, I think that more more and more people are. Uh, are, are interested in mirrorless cameras because they're simply interested in the idea of carrying something lighter and smaller. I mean, it's uh, I think it's the main reason why people like mirrorless cameras in the first place. And um, so it, it's it's an interesting market that is growing. But I don't know I, I, what I might what I think is we might see DSLR becoming in. In the future, I, I cannot tell you how far is that future, but DSLR will maybe become more uh, more an, an, a niche system for very specific use, while mirrorless camera could potentially become um, more and more frequent for uh, lots of enthusiasts or even professional photographers. But I think the mirrorless system is not mature yet to take over DSLR. We still need improvements from a technical point of view and there's also a lot of different aspects that often people don't don't talk about for example i mean if you're an econ or canon user and you're a professional you have a customer support that can be quite good and quite quick i mean uh when when uh, i in 2009 i worked with a photographer at the Cannes film festival in france 
she she was an econ shooter. She had a, a D two hundred, if I remember correctly, and the. Um, the the rubber on the back on, on the on the thumb grip on the back of the camera was a little bit uh, broken and it was detaching the the glue wasn't was holding off. anymore yeah it was coming off and there was an icon uh, support center right in, in the festival she just bought her camera there they fixed it and in the meantime they gave her a Nikon D700 and she shot uh, half of the festival with uh, a full frame camera instead of her uh, of her DX camera and this kind of support for for a professional can be crucial and so that's something I think that for a professional point of view mirrorless system are still lacking for example. Uh, that's that's an interesting perspective yeah definitely awesome. somebody who is a professional should consider uh, other things that not just the gear, it's uh, the whole organization and system supporting that gear, and that's very important. What's your opinion, Andrew? Yeah, I think uh, mirrorless is the future. It will slowly, or DSLRs will slowly uh, uh, become a niche system, but I think that at, the, at this point in time, the problem is also in the uh, people's head. It's like I want a professional. I want a really good camera, and and if if you ask anyone on the street, they will say say like I get it. then I would get a DSLR. They they don't have this view yet that there are uh, uh, those mirrorless systems coming out, or that there are really good mirrorless systems. Most of them think of th those mirrorless cameras like a better compact with an interchangeable lens, but they don't think of it as a professional camera or or a really good system. I think that is still a problem in, in the people's head, but I think the main reason why why um, DSLRs are still out there is basically because because it's it's been done like that for ages. It's been done like that from the film days. It's easy to to build. It's it's all there. There are no no problems anymore. Like mechanical, uh, yeah, never change running system. And and basically, it's because the AF system is is split from from the sensor itself, that's why the mirror is there. The mirror leads the light to the AF system. And if you want to take the photo, yeah, the mirror has to go out of its way, so it's moved up. And and the mirrorless cameras that are coming out, the, the first ones they had, they weren't as quick with focusing. That was the main reason I think most professionals didn't want a mirrorless camera. Because if I shoot sports or in the studio or whatever, I need perfect focus on the eyes. I need perfect focus during a sports event. I can't tell them to, to reshoot that goal, please, because I didn't get the focus right. Uh, it was about reliability. And I think that is where the mirrorless cameras still lack a little, but they are getting there. They're really getting there. And I believe that that in two to five years from now on, we will all shoot mirrorless. And if you aim up your camera and look through the viewfinder, it will pre-record images every every like like 10 frames per second all the time. And if I press the shutter, I can still get the shot. I can get like five seconds before it, 10 seconds after it. It will still just keep recording. I can choose the correct frame I want. The autofocus will be perfect. It will be, uh, I think mirrorless will be uh, something that can do amazing stuff. Okay, good. My computer locked up for a few seconds, but I hope it was the recording was okay anyway. I know if I can add my take, uh, what I see is I'm not making any predictions, but what I see now is that uh, all the innovations mostly are coming from, uh, not coming from the DSLR world, more coming from the mirrorless world. And every new DSLR is just like the previous one, only more, maybe more megapixels or more autofocus points or more frames per second, but they're not innovating uh, by and large. Right. I guess we'll see. Yeah, okay. So thanks for your opinions. Um, I think we can maybe... Uh, uh, maybe if I just can add, uh, Andrew said something interesting uh, about people's head, you know, that they still think that DSLR is the camera to get and because it looks more professional. <laughs> I think that it's slow. It that is already slowly changing, uh, and I, I think that that has has the possibility to change in the next next couple of years because the interesting is growing, and also the example of seeing 
more and more professionals switching from DSLR to mirrorless or start to use mirrorless as a, as a second camera is, uh, of course, is, uh, is attracting. Is it so, so some kind of, uh, of reassurance that, I mean, if there's so many professionals that are switching to the system, it means that the system is good. You know? And um, I think the problem is more when uh, you enter a big camera store and you want to buy a camera, or we've all been there at least once, and what happens is, I mean, if you have a very good, um, a very good seller guy in front of you, then you, you, you might, it might be advised well, but the problem is that you always have a good entry-level DSLR that is like 400, 500 euros, and if you want a good mirrorless camera, you have, for now, you have to pay more. So I think that's price can be sometimes uh, a problem in, in and when people has is on a budget they may they may choose in the end the DSLR because as you said before DSLR have been there for years so it's uh, sometimes it's uh, it's some kind of it's some kind of guarantee you know that they work but I think that little by little people are, are starting to understand that they are interesting alternatives. I agree. Okay. Very good, very good, very good. Very interesting opinions to, to consider. So I, I wanted to, to close this uh, this episode by asking you if you, uh, any of you two has knows of any photographer that you admire uh, that is using mirrorless cameras and you want to uh, suggest them to our watchers to to follow to, to to see what they are doing with those systems. Oh well, what there are there are, there are lots of photographers that we follow and they use uh, those systems. Um, uh, let let me see uh, where I'm gonna I'm gonna see which one we could. There's a lot of names coming to my mind, and uh, we, um, for most of they use different systems, so uh, it's uh, certainly interesting. Okay, well, if you don't have one right off the top of your head. Yeah, I'm okay. just going to, I don't have one, right now one name, but I have a, a different name, so I'm going to just give some to you in a second. Uh, well, on the um, well, on the for example, on the Olympus side, I I really like uh, the job of uh, Thomas Lothar uh -huh. or uh, Nick Bu Nick Buchan Grant, for example, the two uh, two Olympus photographers that uh, do interesting work with uh, Olympus cameras. Uh, Thomas Lothar is a is a street photographer, for example, and um, the very interesting, uh, very interesting style. I really like his work. Um, on the on the Fujifilm side, there's um, there's actually a, there's, a, there's a Canadian group that uh, I really really follow with interest. And there's Patrick Larocque, for example, uh, Otman Kama, and uh, Riley Joseph, and uh, then there's, uh, <laughs> good, good. I mean, I, I, I can quote a lot of photographers that they use mirrors and that they follow with interest. Nice, uh, yeah, I, I asked for one and I yeah, got I more, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> good, very good. Uh, yeah, I follow Thomas Leutert, uh, I like him, his style a lot. I'm trying to get a bit into, you know, that since I started using mirrorless cameras, and especially the, the Fuji X100S, I felt like a street photographer. I said, I got this camera. It's perfect for street photography, which I I never seriously practiced. So, and, and started doing it a bit, and now I'm doing it more and more. And the thing about what I find, at least for myself, since I, I started getting into a mirrorless camera, especially the Fuji X100S, not because I thought it was better, than my Nikon DSLR, but it, because it was different. So I thought, 
uh, I can take different photos. It, it, or the camera, well, it's not the camera that takes different photos, right? It's you. But it's the different form factor, the fact that it's a small camera, it's silent. You can have it always with you. You don't have to, especially with the, with that camera that has a fixed lens, not even a zoom. Uh, you don't have to think which lenses I'm going to carry today, which lens I will use for this scene, and so on. Uh, you just bring it to your eye and you shoot. Mm -hmm. You move, you move around more because you, you don't have a zoom and so on. So you have a different attitude to, to taking images. And in the end, you take different images than the ones you took before. And I think that's very much stimulating. And, uh, and, uh, and I like that for that reason, especially. So, so Ugo, um, it kind of changed the style you shoot, you would say? Uh, it, it added more, more subjects, more topics, more and more. OK. Uh, I, I still like, I like shooting landscapes. And I don't think that changed much with mirrorless. I mean, when if I'm really committed to do shooting a, a landscape scene, I would put the camera on a tripod uh, and use a remote control and use filters and everything. And DSLR or mirrorless doesn't change a bit. It's, yeah, maybe I use, uh, I would, wouldn't use live view more. I would use the viewfinder in the DSLR. I use live view more with the mirrorless. But in that respect, my photography hasn't changed. But I, I started doing more like street photography. I would feel not at my, not comfortable, not at ease doing street photography with a DSLR uh, because it's, it's relatively big especially with the zoom lens, uh, it's noisy, it's clunky, and so on. And the Fuji is so small and silent and, uh, and obtrusive, and people, and it's a conversation starter, because people will ask me, is that a film camera? <laughs> no? It's got an LCD on the back, so it's, uh, I, I, do, I do more things. I take more photos. That's, the, for me, the, the benefit. Right. Okay, that, that's an interesting point, because, um, I, you can read lots of people saying that those, those mirrorless cameras um, change the, the, their style or uh, they change the, the way they see photography. Or a lot of people are saying, um, well, I, 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 I got back a little bit of enthusiasm in shooting with those cameras. And uh, so, I mean, th th that's interesting because um, we always, it's, it's true that we it's the photographer that, Take the picture, not the not the not the camera. It's the photographer that makes the difference. But in the same times, we are all a little bit uh, uh, addicted to the to the gear we use. And when we have a, a, a gear that we really like, we, we we will tend to to shoot more and shoot better. I mean, it's uh, I think that the a camera can influence a photographer. It's uh, it, it's all psychological, really. I Means that. I mean, because I mean, you you, you can one of I, I had the chance to 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 test many cameras. So uh, I mean, and one of the the best shots I I took last year was with the uh, with uh, the Sony RX100, which is a a, comp, a point and shoot camera with uh, with a large sensor. And uh, there's a lot of picture I like with the X100s as well, or with the WMDs. But uh, but it's true that if if you have a camera you really like and uh, Somehow it can it can help. It, it's either you your style evolves a little bit, or you start like, like you said you start to to approach a new genre of photography that you didn't want to do before. So it's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 where the gear can count more than uh, tech specs or uh, other other aspects. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I think we are at the end of this uh, episode. Um, so I want to thank you both for uh, for attending. And uh, Matthew, where, where can people find you online? Well, they can find me on uh, Mirror Lessons, the website, which uh, the URL is uh, bestmirrorlesscamerareviews.com. Uh, long URL, but <laughs> uh, also yeah, they can find us on, on Twitter, Google. Sure Don't worry. <laughs> Mm. Yes, go ahead. And uh, on of course we are on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and uh, I mean, okay. Most of if you if you give us your your links, we'll add them to the the show notes that will be 
uh, right. on the website together with the video. And about how about you, Andrew? Yeah, just check out fstoplaunch.com and you'll find me in the Bowder section. And there are all the links. And you can find me at my website at ucphoto.me or on fstoplaunch.com as well. Okay, thank you very much. And we're done. Thanks.